released in February of 2017 for Windows, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One, it's For Honor. Developed by Ubisoft Montreal and also published by Ubisoft, For Honor is an action fighting game featuring three historical factions, knights, vikings, and samurai, who must all duke it out in various game modes. Each faction has its own unique heroes, but they all fall under four distinct hero types. Vanguards, who are jacks of all trade. Heavies, who are giant brutes who are slow, but can deal a ton of damage. Assassins, who are quick and agile, but have little health. And hybrids, which are a mix of two previously mentioned hero types. The combat in For Honor is handled through what the developers call the Art of Battle system. There are three stances in combat, left, right, and high. Each stance can be attacked from, but also can be guarded from when the opponent mirrors that stance. Each character has the ability to perform heavy and light attacks as well as dodges, feints, guard breaks, parries, throws, and special moves. There are six different game modes in For Honor. Story mode, which can be completed cooperatively with another player, 1v1 duel, 2v2 brawl, 4v4 deathmatch, where you can respawn and try and get the most points through kills, 4v4 Elimination, where you only have one life and must eliminate the other team. And finally, Dominion, a 4-player versus 4-player control point capturing game. After completing a game, you earn various rewards, such as gear, which has different stats. Gear can only be used in certain game modes, though. You can also earn Steel for completing in-game tasks. Steel is used to buy gear supply drops as well as unlock the ability to customize your heroes. You can also purchase steel with real world money. The final reward you get for completing a multiplayer game is war assets. You can deploy these to a tile of your choosing on the overworld map to help your faction's chances in the faction war. When you first boot the game, you are told to choose one of three factions. Each faction is fighting for a territory on the overworld map. The map is updated with current standings every six hours. The team that controls the most territory at the end of the season is declared the winner and receives special rewards. Now with all that said, is any of it good? Let's find out with The Good. The game's combat system is fairly unique in presentation, but mechanically, it's a fighting game. The left, right, and high stances are analogous to low, mid, and high attacks in traditional fighting games. Adding to that, there's also the sacred triangle of fighting game mechanics. Throws, attacks, and blocks. Just as with any other fighting game, attacks beat throws, throws beat blocks, and blocks beat attacks. This leads to other staple fighting game mechanics coming into the fold, such as footsies and spacing. Each character features unique combos and special moves that are dictated by the stamina meter. Special moves take a hefty amount of stamina, so missing the attack is troublesome. The moves and combos themselves feel weighty and satisfying to pull off. One of the more unique facets of the game is the execution system. If you kill an opponent with a heavy attack, you then have the option to execute them. Executing them lengthens the enemy's respawn time, makes it so they cannot be revived by teammates, and also gives you a boost of health. The risk lies in the fact that you are completely vulnerable to attacks from other enemies while executing. For Honor has some really great and diverse classes. You have fast characters that do bleed damage like Nobushi and Peacemaker, or characters like the Raider and Shugoki who are slow and large but love to push their opponents around and deal massive damage. There wasn't a single character that I didn't enjoy playing or thought was too weak to hold their own while they're in competent hands. The in-game customization options are pretty great. I'm not even talking about the gear, which some people will love because they can fine-tune their stats even more to fit their playstyle. I'm talking specifically about the emblem and overall look of your hero customization. The game gives you a good amount of options to mess around with, as well as giving you the ability to change the appearance of gear to keep all of its stats. I actually spent a surprising amount of time customizing my heroes, which is something I don't usually do much of. Not only are the customization options diverse, but so are the in-game maps. Having three distinct factions from history allows Ubisoft to make some really interesting maps. There's everything from Japanese temples, to frozen tundras, to cathedrals and castles. 
Almost every stage has some element of environmental hazards. Whether it be pits or spiked walls or a saw blade, lava pits, anything really. Enemies can be thrown into these hazards to be damaged or killed. This further adds to the idea that spacing and positioning is very important to this game. Both the graphics and art style of this game I think are beautiful. The footage you are seeing here, and throughout this review, is recorded on a PC at max settings at 60 frames per second. I also found the game to be pretty well optimized. I do have a very capable rig, details are in the description if you're curious, and I was able to get above 60 frames at all times while playing, usually getting frame rates in the 100 to 120 frame range. And while all this is good, not everything in the game is. So let's take a look at the bad. My biggest problem with this game is how defensive it is. There's various systems in play that make it difficult to be aggressive and make the first move. Many matches turn into turtle fests because of how many tools the enemy has to deal with your attacks. They can dodge out of the way, they can straight up block it, or they can parry it. They may be able to get almost guaranteed damage off that parry or block. If you try and guard break them, they have 6 frames to counter guard break. The way the game handles guard breaks in general is bothersome. In traditional fighting games, when an enemy tries to throw you, you can tech their throw and cancel it out by throwing at the same time. It's all about knowing the enemy's moves and anticipating what they're going to do. In For Honor, if you try and do that, the game will just select one of the guard breaks to go through. It's really frustrating because there are many times when I know my enemy's going to guard break, so I guard break at the same time, and I'm punished for it. It makes it so that it's just better to wait for the enemy to guard break in the first place, wait for it to connect, and then counter guard break. But doing this plays into my earlier point that it turns into a turtle fest waiting for the other enemy to attack first, because aggression seems to be really nerfed. A lot of the game is standing around in the neutral, being defensive, and waiting for your enemy to make a mistake and capitalizing on it. As for other issues within the game, the in-game currency of steel is doled out unevenly. 1v1 duels give about half that the 4v4 game modes do, so if you enjoy mostly 1v1s, you're out of luck. I understand why they did this. 1v1s are much shorter in length than a 4v4, so people could just play 1v1s and lose quickly to get easy steel. But I do wish Ubisoft would just give standard amounts of steel that you get from 4v4s to the victor in the 1v1 scenarios, so that there's a large incentive to actually play and win. My final complaint with the game is a big one. The server connections are all peer-to-peer, -peer and they stink. Many times I've played matches where someone got desynced and the game has to resynchronize, pausing the gameplay in action, and usually sending you backwards a couple seconds. Dealing with router port forwarding and NAT types to play with friends is just, in general, no fun. There's also other issues, like if you're in a lobby and most of the players leave, instead of trying to find players to fill those empty lobby slots, the game just boots you back to the main menu where it tells you to select matchmaking again. Overall, it's a really poor system. For Honor is a really fun and fresh fighting game. There's not much like it, and I am having a blast playing it. That being said, it feels like it's a couple patches away from being a truly great game. Now it's time for the rating. 